Morning Sycamores, it is Wednesday the 6th of May. Our starter today is about apostrophes for possession and again it's those nouns that have an S on the end. The owner has an S on the end so the apostrophe goes after the S and then we've got their belongings straight afterwards. It's a bit different today and you have to think about this starter so watch very, very carefully at my model for, to see how to do it. So you've got four words in a row. So here I've got pencils, pencils with an apostrophe afterwards, apostrophe afterwards, pencils with an S apostrophe and an S, and pencils with pencil apostrophe S. So we're thinking about the plural of the noun, so in this case, it's going to be pencils. So first of all, just find the plural. So that would be pencils. There are lots of pencils. The pencils leads. The pencils tray. The tray belonging to the pencils. The lead belonging to the pencils. How would we write the pencils lead. How would we show that the lead belongs to the pencils? What's the rule? Pencils has an S on the end, we put an apostrophe after it. So which one is pencils with an apostrophe after it? Let's have a look. Oh, it's the one next door. That one is just a bit of a, you never write it like that. This one would be if there was a one pencil with no S on the end, okay? So pencils and pencils. So we're looking for the plural form. So we're looking for the word that hasn't got the apostrophe first of all. That one's got an apostrophe. That one's got an apostrophe. Ah, the noun is chicken. For example, the chicken's eggs. Chickens has got an S on the end. So we're looking for chickens with an S on the end and then we're going to put the apostrophe. Which one is it? Oh, it's this one. Chickens with an S on the end and then an apostrophe. The chicken's coop was left open. The chicken's eggs were in lots of different huts, okay? So you would, that, that's some examples of some sentences that you'd put that in. This one is when there's one chicken, one chicken, chicken, apostrophe S. This one, you'd never write that. It's just a red herring in there. That means it's just a spoof one, okay? So you have, first, the first thing you have to do is find the example that doesn't have an apostrophe, that's your owner noun. If it's got an S on the end of it, they all have today, I think. If, it, if it's got an S on the end of it, you are looking for the version that has an S and then an apostrophe after it. That's your starter. If I were you, I'd stop the video now, go and do that before you forget it, and then come back again. Okay, the rest of the lesson, the main part of the lesson is you are going to edit your fable that you wrote in your hot write yesterday. So hopefully you've got about a page's worth of writing in paragraphs, the last one's probably your shortest, with a moral after it and some speech in there and some really good sentences. But we need to make sure that the level of your writing is good enough. So today you're gonna to come back to it with completely fresh eyes and you're going to be proofreading and you're gonna be looking for things to correct and things to improve. I call it editing stations because you are going to visit each one of those boxes. So you read it through for the first box. You read it through just looking for the second box. You read it through just looking for the third box. You read it through just looking for the fourth box. Don't try and do it all at once. 
do one, stop at one station at a time. And then you will get most of them that you need to correct or improve. So here's my story. Once there lived an ostrich who was very foolish, it's slightly different to the one I wrote yesterday. Despite his great size and weight, he believed he could fly his, he, could, he believed he could, oh, he could fly, full stop. His friends told over and over, but he didn't listen. Okay. Box number one says the first station you're stopping at is, check that it makes sense. Well, that didn't make sense to me. There was a sentence that did not make sense. Let me read it again and I need to fill in, either cross something out, add something in, change things around to make it make sense. Once there lived an ostrich who was very foolish. That's fine. Despite his great size and weight, he believed he could fly. That makes sense. His friends told over and over. His friends told over and over. That doesn't make sense. His friends told him over and over. Right, his friends told, insertion mark, him. And I want you to try and use a different colour pen so that when you photograph it and send it to me, I'm going to be able to see really easily the corrections and the improvements that you've made. And there should be lots of them, not just two or three. We're talking about eight or nine here. Okay, so his friends told him over and over, but he didn't listen. Right, the rest of it makes sense. So when I'm convinced that I've been through and it makes sense, I then move on to the next station. I think the next station is punctuation. So I'm gonna read through and check that I've got all my punctuation. For year three and four, you should have capital letters and full stops to mark your sentences. You must make sure you've got those because that's actually what's expected in year one and two. So by year three and four, you absolutely should have that cracked. You need to be looking for commas to mark clauses like fronted adverbials and in lists. You need to have a question mark if the character has asked, uh, has written a question, um, has said a question in your speech, for example. An exclamation mark if something amazing or shocking happens. You need to have your 66 and 99, your inverted commas, around your speech. I think that's all of. I don't think I've forgotten any of the punctuation that's expected for year three and four. So I'm now going to check through for punctuation. Can anyone spot what's missing? I oh, can't believe I missed this after what we did last week. Once, fronted adverbial, there lived an ostrich who was very foolish. That's fine. Capital letter, full stop. Capital letter. Despite his great size and weight, he believed. Ooh, hang on a minute. Because this, he believed he could fly is my main clause. It makes sense on its own. He believed he could fly. So the bit before it must be a fronted adverbial. Have I put a comma? No, I haven't. I need to put it in. Naughty Miss Weston. So despite his great size and weight, comma, thank you very much, he believed he could fly. Full stop. His friends told him over and over, but he didn't listen. Something wrong with didn't. Something was wrong with didn't. It needs a piece of punctuation because it's short. It's a contraction for did not. The O has been taken out of not. And so I need to put an apostrophe where the O has been taken out. It's called a contraction. He didn't listen. Oh yeah, apostrophes. I missed apostrophes out on the, the list of punctuation that I said. Can't believe that after our starters, I have missed apostrophes off. Right, so I now need you to visit each station. So you, I would then check through for punctuation, especially fronted adverbials, has it got the comma? 
especially have I got all my rules for speech if you can't remember them look back to last week's work especially apostrophes for possession look back for the work for last week so if you said um, the ostrich's legs it would be ostrich apostrophe s legs if you said the elephant's ears it would be elephant apostrophe s ears so make sure you have got those in because usually you're talking about one character and it will be apostrophe s have a really really thorough session at checking through for those corrections when you've done that can you improve it at all so once there lived an ostrich who was very foolish i could i could have put an adjective in there. I could have put once there was a foolish ostrich who believed he could fly and then I, have, I would use it as an adjective there. Despite his great size and weight, mm, great, I could probably up level that instead of great, cross that out, I could put colossal if I can spell it. Okay, so despite his colossal size and weight, despite his magnificent size and weight, despite his incredible size and weight. So you can up-level the words and make them more powerful, make them stronger, okay? So I then need that to be photographed and that to be sent to me because I want to see how well you have spotted things that needed correcting and things that could be improved and actually from your checklist from yesterday hopefully you have already improved by adding in anything you forgot to put in onto your plan. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.